And welcome back everybody to another Blender tutorial, this time without a face cam because, I don't know, I thought it'd be more relaxing without a face cam and this one doesn't really need it. Plus, I'm about to go on a trip where this time I'm going to be walking to Old Orchard Beach, so I'm going to be walking to Maine, it's 100 miles, and I'm a wreck, I've been wearing a poncho everywhere, I gotta get my stuff in order, and I thought, you know what, let's make a nice relaxing tutorial. Uh, before I go, because I'm a slave to, to labor, which is this tutorial making process, but I enjoy it. Anyways, <laughs> uh, we're going to be making this flower today. It's a completely geometry notes project, and it's this nice pulsing radial geometric thing. And uh, if you look closely, you're going to see it's just a bunch of planes uh, that I have mathematically set up in an interesting way. And it looks cool. Uh, but beyond that, of course, this is procedural, so I can change the amount of vertices, which is cool. I kind of feel like a robot. I'm, I'm always, you know, showing these geometry node projects and then being like, oh, it's procedural, you know? It's like, I assume a lot of you guys are repeat viewers. I don't have to keep explaining it. But uh, the number of vertices, in other words, the number of instances to get a denser grid is one thing that I thought would be like, cool <laughs> to have control over. Another thing is this pulsing radius. So you're going to see the radius goes up and down and up and down. But I added a general slider to kind of control the overall effect, as you can see. So it can be very big or quite small and never gets that large. Um, and then some of the final things are like the grid density, which is a different way to make this look more uh, complex. And then finally, my favorite is the special scale slider, which gives this a different feel. It's kind of like that. It reminds me of this Chinese finger trap thing. I don't know why, but it, it's mesmerizing to look at. And we're also going to talk about how to do the color and all this. So let, let's just get started. Um, I'm going to be using Blender version 3.0 alpha. So, <laughs> you know, get with the program. If you're not there, get it because this is going to be a geometry nodes fields. Um, speaking of which, let's go to geometry nodes, set up a node tree. And while I'm going to assume you've used geometry nodes, I'm going to explain the process, right? But uh, geometry nodes on this cube, we don't want the cube, so get rid of the group input. And uh, long story short, you know, we're going to have a radial array of grids, kind of like a kind of like a field of solar panels, if it made no sense, and <laughs> it was a motion graphics field. Um, to do this, what we're going to need to do is we need a circle to spawn stuff on. So I'm just going to type in mesh uh, circle. Uh, you could also do a, I believe you could also do a curve circle. Is there a difference? <laughs> um, maybe. Um, so a curve circle is a we actually view that is a circle that's actually a curve. Duh. Why, why am I even here? What am I even doing? Um, and a mesh is a mesh. But long story short, we're just going to be instancing on the points. So what does it matter anyways? So I'm just going to add in a circle. On this circle, we want to put, um, you know, certain types of geometry. Uh, before we get to that, I'm just going to use kind of like a, so I'm going to instance stuff on it. I'm just going to use a um, temporary object. So I'm going to use a curve line for this. And you'll see why in a second. So you can see, I plugged it in, nothing happens, which is scary. You know, <laughs> you're like, oh, as uh, my friend would say, this is like insecure attachment. If you were a baby, your parenting, the parenting style is not good. Uh, but you can see when we go to the 3D viewport, you can see what's going on. Um, each one of these points is spawning its own line, but they're going up on the Z axis. So you won't see it from a uh, bird's eye view. The reason that I'm using lines instead of the grids we're going to end up using, by the way, it's a good time to save. I'm going to call this, uh, what's, uh, what's very uh, corporate and soulless? Yes, <laughs> available on Patreon, which it is. Uh, Patreon link in the description uh, once this project's finished. Um, the, the nice thing about curve line, the reason I'm using it is it shows direction. And we want to make sure the direction's correct before we start putting down our grid. So to see this from the top view, instead of having it go from 0, 0, 0, vertically up 1, I'm going to have it go to the right on the x-axis. So now it's spawning on each of these points, uh, which we can control procedurally. So you can see how many, you know, and the radius and all this. Um, but it's going to the right on the x-axis. Now, you might think, oh, no big deal. You take these and you rotate them and, you know, you, you essentially get the effect. But you're going to notice that they all kind of rotate together, kind of like we have this weird cylinder thing. And it turns out the key to this is we want each one to be facing its own direction and then they spin kind of like we want this to be the sun and we want sun rays coming out relative to their normal. So like this and like this and like this instead of all of them facing the same direction and then we do the rotation. Well, how do we do that? 
because when we rotate it, they all move together. Well, what we need to do is for each of these points on the circle, we need to extract the angle that it should be facing. Now, the math for this is actually pretty simple. You want to take the normal, this thing, right? For this uh, point, we have this normal, and we want to extract the angle, right? Uh, wow, dude, I... <laughs> Uh, if if uh, handwriting had an accent, mine would be uh, sloppy French. Um, <laughs> we need to extract the angle. And it turns out uh, to get this normal vector, we can either use the normal coordinates, which are referencing each of these points as a field, or because it's a circle, it just so happens position and normal is the same. That's the special property of a circle. So you can use either. Uh, but for this, so you want to imagine that this position is storing the vectors, kind of like the sun ray vectors, <laughs> if you want to think about it that way. Uh, we want to take it and get the uh, angle. And if you remember a lot of my old tutorials about shading nodes and all that, we always found angle. And the process we did that with is we took a vector like this, the normal vector, which in this case is position. We want the access to x, y, z, so we separate it. And uh, if you ever took trigonometry, you'll remember that arctangent is actually what you want. And in fact, it's arctangent of rise over run, like the slope y divided by x. Just take arctan2, which does the division, and you just connect it like this. So don't worry about the math if you don't get it. Long story short, this is taking arctangent and dividing, and we want rise over run. The magic is, so again, we want to rotate on the z-axis, not the x-axis or the y-axis, which would give us weird results. Only the z-axis, so let's you know isolate that. Uh, but the magic here is you take this, you connect it, and boop, they're all facing uh, relative to their thing. And we can actually make this inwards. Whoops. I make it like a negative distance. It's facing inwards or outwards and control the length. Um, but as I was referencing, the special thing about a circle is that these are interchangeable. But that doesn't matter. That That is me just tugging on my own ween, being like, I am so smart and I belong at the dinner party. Um, so, you know, the sun rays are going outwards. This is useful, again, because now we can add additional rotation. So, like, the rotation we did, now we add it. So we can do what we had before, add additional stuff. And you see now we get this kind of flowery kind of James, James I, what? <laughs> like James Bond looking down the barrel kind of thing. This is the key. So really, at this point, it's just adding stylistic stuff. So... Since we've set up this uh, nice rotation, uh, now we can swap out our line for something that will look better. A grid, which is just a plane, in, a, in essence, you know. But the nice thing about the plane is you look at it in wireframe and you're like, oh, there's actually a complicated pattern here. And you can, you know, increase or decrease that. And as you add this, it looks complex. And you can already see how we're getting the final effect. Um, the question is, how do we take this and actually make it visible? And the answer is, uh, you can't do it in ge geometry nodes. You need to use wireframe. Um, eventually, a lot of these modifiers are going to be brought inside geometry nodes as nodes. But for now, we have the geometry nodes, which is you, we made it. And then we're going to apply wireframe, which, you know, kind of makes it look like we're looking at it from a wireframe view. Um, so at this point, to make the rotation happen without, like, animating like this or adding in keyframes, uh, let's just add in a driver hash frame divided by, I don't know, 20, 30, 3.14, 1592653. No, uh, let's do 20. Um, this is a driver that takes the frame number. So hash frame is the frame number relative to the timeline. This is another example of something I'm getting tired of explaining. Maybe I don't need to. It takes the frame number and divides it by 20. So it goes 20 times slower than playback. Um, and that already looks cool. Um, so, you know, we could add a bit more control to this and we will. But before we do that, let's make this look good. So we're going to render it in Eevee. Why not? It will look uh, fine. Uh, the secret to this is we're going to add in color, uh, but we're going to make this glow and use bloom is the idea. Um, so let's make a material. We're going to make, by the way, comment below. I'll read the comments for this one. Comment below if you actually like this uh, no face cam thing, because it really lets me focus on my voice performance like I'm a voice actor who's barely getting paid, except for the patrons. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's nice and common, all this. So let, let me know. It's important to me. It's important to you. It's important to everybody. Uh, we're going to make a material. I'm going to call it emission or no, I'm going to call it E mission. It's an E on emission. And, uh, what it's going to be is it's just going to be a glowing white material for now, uh, which you're going to see isn't actually showing up. And that's because of this weird geometry nodes thing. That's actually good, but it's, it's annoying. 
where you actually have to add a material assign at the end of all this. We're like, okay, we have this geometry. What material is it going to have? Well, you material assign the E mission. And now you can see, especially if we make the background black and we enable some bloom so it glows and we make the glow even more, you see we now have the uh, basis of our thing. Um, so it looks good. But uh, how do we make it, you know, vibrant and changing colors and all this? Well, if you remember the original, it kind of looked like there was a lot going on. But really, the color was just dependent on how close it was to the center. I wasn't doing anything fancy where it has UV coordinates and it stretches with it, which I think would actually make it look bad. It would make it look very messy because the color would be spinning with it. Like imagine a lot of color, or no, a lot of water wheels that are pouring water into each other. It becomes a chaotic system. We want to keep it simple. So since we have this material, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use texture coordinates to do this. So you'll notice we can still apply a coordinate system to this fucking weird geometry. Um, object coordinates are the one we want because it's uh, centered on the origin. And if we look at length, by the way, these nodes, uh, node preview add-on is where you see them. So we, we, we take the centered coordinate system. We output the length, which is telling us how far away it is from the center. Uh, to make that more visually clear, we send this through a greater than, less than. So you can see it's really just a, a radial from the center effect, which, by the way, I do know. I don't think anybody ever comments this, but I it's a weighing on my mind. You could just use this uh, radial node with object coordinates. No, it's not radial. Is it spherical? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, to kind of get a version of this, but whatever. So... Either way, I'm going to use this length gradient to kind of dye our emission, which is what that, I've never said that before, but apparently that's what I'm doing now. We're going to dye the emission, and we can pick some colors for it. So, like, we could have it start with the color, and we're going to need to modify this a bit. We can see there's a tiny bit of red here, and then it goes to white, um, and you can kind of control that. Um, in general, though, you could pick some colors here, but the reason it's not showing up is we're assuming that the length starts at zero at the center, and then we go to white. But really, this thing never gets like smaller than this circle. So let's uh, take some measurements. So let's say this is the most contracted, like a butthole that... This really is like a starfish butthole, but uh, <laughs> this is the most contracted it could be. We can measure it with the measure tool that nobody ever uses. So you just, you know, click and drag. So at minimum, it's like 0.3, and at maximum, it's like, I don't know, 2 or something like that. Um, so we can actually use that in here. We just take map range. So instead of length going from zero to infinity, we say we only care about the uh, sections that go from like, I don't know, 0.3 was our first measurements. And now you can see this is getting red to like two. I don't know, it might get a bit bigger than that, but maybe actually smaller, like 1.7. Um, we take that relevant interval and we map it to zero to one with this color ramp uses. So now you can see we add in some colors. There's a nice transition. You can add in more colors and we get a, uh, a cool looking effect. I think this is roughly the color scheme that I used for mine, but you can modify this easily and you can add more colors. You can change the blending, whatever. So fine. Uh, what makes this look more dynamic, by the way, first of all, this is the kind of project where the more bloom, the better. So I just take down the threshold and bring up the strength. Um, but what makes this look more dynamic is it's kind of very repetitive. And the pulsing, that prolapsed asshole thing <laughs> that I was showing before, that's what's going to make it look dynamic. Um, luckily, this kind of looks like a complex effect. But remember, there's not much going on here. And it turns out this radius is kind of controlling the size of this on average. And because the colors are dependent on the texture coordinates, it has this cool effect where it changes colors depending, depending on how big it is. So what we could do is we can make it dynamic. So let's take a sine function, something that already oscillates. We run it through a driver, so hash frame divided by 10. It's going to go twice as quickly as it's spinning. Just like before, uh, we don't want to just plug this in because it will shrink and go to negative 1 and do some weird stuff. But instead, we want to map range. Sine goes from negative 1 to 1, map it to 0 to 1. And uh, you could have it instead be like the smallest it could be is 0.5 and the largest it could be is 1.5. So it gets big and small and big and small. And for example, if you want to get it to get really big, you, you know, you make it like that. But something like this. Okay, so this makes it look more dynamic. Uh, what else can we do? Well, 
we know the number of vertices is kind of like how many instances we have. So this could look very dense, which I don't think actually looks good. I think uh, having some uh, scarcity uh, actually makes it look interesting. Um, so I don't know, something, something like 30 vertices, whatever it was before is fine. Um, we also have control over the grid. So this is like the planes that are being instanced, which again are being wireframed. How dense are they? And uh, some other stuff. Uh, but it turns out that the scale slider I showed before, this like super fancy one, it turns out if you just scaled the, these uh, grids, the uh, particle, or these points that are being distributed, right, or instances on the points, you just like change this number. It makes it look super interesting. And the reason is, if you think about it, if you kind of look at what what's happening here, it's just a bunch of like rectangular planes instead of square planes. And that gives it this kind of like double layer of complexity effect. Yeah, you make this three and now there's like a triple layer complexity. Re-add the wireframe and you can see now there's a lot going on here. You can also do this on the Y axis to get a different look. And I don't know if the Z axis does anything. It shouldn't really, because we're looking at it from a top down. By the way, this uh, effect is two dimensional as is. Um, but you know, you add some like rotation on the X and Y and you get a cone. And I imagine, I haven't really tried this, but I imagine this will give a different looking effect. It does. <laughs> Look at that. That's like a completely different thing. Like it has a different vibe to it. This one has a more sawtooth pattern. And uh, you can get a lot out of this, as you can imagine. But I think I'm going to leave it. Uh, wow. Yeah, I'm going to leave it with a voice crack. Um, I think I'm going to leave it here because I, I can. you can imagine what you do with this. So um, at this point, I just want to pimp out my Patreon because you got to pay the bills. Um, Patreon exists. God damn it. Why does my voice keep cracking? Um, it's a place uh, where you can get early access to tutorials, exclusive tutorials. I've been going ham on the exclusive tutorials, by the way. A lot of... Uh, tutorial series on the matrix effect and the severed hand and all this uh, but it's also a place to get blend files like this one and anything else i've ever uploaded so if you want to support uh these tutorials and also the default or no this is the cut damn it and also also the cg matter ones uh that is the place to do it there's a link in the description uh thank you to all 717 last i checked patrons your penises are massive if you're female bodied your boobs are massive like i don't know you're just the greatest people, which is kind of like a fucked up thing to say. Like, it's not like bad, but just like, oh, you give money and then therefore you are better than every. I don't know. But um, I do appreciate it. So Patreon exists. There are benefits or you could just donate. Um, other than that, uh, that's my time because I said so. And uh, I think I'm done. Goodbye.